Hello and welcome to the Build With Air Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out with all of you. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber and you can reply with those emotes, let me know that you're here. Or you can just say hi. You don't have to use my emotes. And if you're not a subscriber, you can also just use other emotes or say hey or whatever you want to do. Harold, thank you for hosting the stream. Appreciate that very much. This is the intro portion of our evening here where we're going to hang out. We're going to chat with each other for a little bit. We're going to let some... You know, folks that are coming in casually late slip into the stream. Arista fans here. Hi, Arista fan. Happy to have you here. Um, but yeah, we're going to let people come in. We're working on the legs of our Kyrios, our Master Grade Kyrios you can see right here. Our good friend there. Dude wants his rug is here. Hi, it's been a hot minute. Happy to have you here. Lashbrook is here. Hello, hello, of course. Um, welcome, welcome. Yeah, the Kyrios. Uh, now, someone asked me, they're like, hey, what happened to the backpack? Well, it's here. I took the what counts as the backpack, which is really just the cockpit for flight mode. I took those off because it doesn't like sit well with it on because it just rocks around and doesn't look great. So I took the, it off just for uh, building purposes. And then, of course, I will reattach that uh, when it comes time to transform it, which might be tonight. I don't know. If we're body complete on this kit, we might transform it before we get into the uh, weapons. Um, where at the very least, we will build the uh, um, shield, which is also has a claw attachment, because that is important for the kit, uh, for the transformation. Um, but yeah, we might do the transformation and then build the weapons. We might build the weapons. I don't know. I, I, think, I think, yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably uh, body complete this. And then, um, yeah, go for there. That's my thinking. Um, before we build the beam submachine gun, which is the last of our stickers, and build the hand missile units, which are missile launchers that lock onto the arms. If you saw these kind of like holes that they're just here on the kit, that's where those go. They lock on there. There's no cover over it when you're not using them which I think is a mistake, but I didn't design the kit, so whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you're well. It's Saturday evening. Now, some of you were probably wondering what my big Valentine's uh, uh, tie-in would be, since it's the day before Valentine, Valentine's Day, uh, also known as Palentine's Day or Galentine's Day, and I don't have one. Uh, I was looking to get one of the, those Lego brick heads uh, there's a Valentine's one that, that I haven't built before, and that turned out to be either incredibly expensive, way too expensive for what the amount of pieces, or it was going to get delivered after Valentine's Day, and I was like, I don't need that in my life. Uh, so I didn't do it, and maybe I should have. Maybe I'm at fault here for not having any kind of tie-in on uh, on a, uh, a fine um, uh, Valentine's Day, but I don't know. I think there's there's sometimes years where we're doing like, oh, I'll do my pumpkin carving stream. Like, that makes sense to me. Um, you know, I'll, I got a crisp that we did the Nutcracker around Christmas uh, Lego thing. That made sense to me. Uh, but finding, it, you know, it's like, oh, it's Valentine's Day. Here's the thing. There's only one romance-related Gundam, and we already built it. The Love Phantom has the name Love in it. It's also a death scythe with spider arms. So, yeah, I was going to build that someday, but it was fun to build that for Valentine's Day. I don't know. I'm trying to figure those big tie-ins. I'm like, Meh, I'll just do it when I want to do it. Like, we're going to do that Evangelion uh, Unit 2 um, model or nano block thing next. That's after this. Hey, Julie, welcome. Happy to have you here. Um, we're going to do that nano block thing next. Uh, not because, like, oh, because Ava, the last Ava movie is going to come. Like, I'm not tying it in. It's just the next thing we're going to build. That's mostly what I'm interested in doing uh, as far as these streams. Occasionally, my Wednesday streams will be tied into an event, um, my bonus streams. But most of the time, nah. Um, we will get building in a moment or two. Waiting for a few more. See if a few more folks want to join us on this lovely uh, uh uh, Saturday night. We'll see if we have any more friends wanting to pop in and see what's up. I, I'm so happy all, all of you are here. Welcome, welcome. Of course, we are going to get building in a moment or two. Um, I'm full of uh, macaroni and cheese that I made on Wednesday. Uh, making that amount was a mistake. I probably should have halved the recipe and just done a half. And instead of doing all of it, I did regret it or I could have 
frozen some of it, and which I did not. I just refrigerated it. I should have frozen some of it. I didn't. I had some of it tonight. It was very good. You'll see it on my Twitter if you look at my Twitter. Uh, I uh, did a, uh, a sweet sausage, diced that up, and threw it in there. And then also I have peas, so I put some lusur, which are very uh, kind of tart peas, um, almost sour, um, that I put in there as well. And that's excellent. That was very good and very simple and easy, which I'm not against, of course. Um, but it's just so cheesy and heavy and great, but it's just sitting on my stomach. I ate that two hours ago and I'm still like, Oh, so it's real, real good. Was happy to make it happy to eat it. But, uh, yeah, I made too much of it. So on the 24th, when I do my next and probably last Pat Bears, uh, uh, sorry, uh, prepare with bear my cooking stream, because I'm going to do another one on the 24th. Uh, when I do that, um, I'm going to have to pick a recipe that I can eat pretty quickly. Like, I still have zucchini chips left, but, like, those are going to go. That's not a problem. Um, but this other, the, yeah, whatever I make next, which I haven't figured out yet. I have to figure it out so that I can start getting ingredients together and see what I've got. Um, it'll be another thing. It will be another thing that involves a lot of, like, prepping and dicing and chopping and that kind of thing. But I'm probably not going to do stovetop. I'm probably going to do put it in the oven and then just, while it's cooking, get the next thing ready. And then I think I'm going to do that instead. Um, that way I can focus on just, like, the prep camera and I don't have to worry about taking things on and off a stove just so that I can, you can see what I'm doing. Um, that's what I'm thinking is just do two oven-based dishes. Uh, or, and also I have a toaster oven, so I could do the regular oven and the toaster oven and kind of like you use both. So I'm thinking I might do that. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to retweet my tweet. I'm going to, we're getting to building cause it's time to, to da -da 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 build. Uh, so we'll do that. And, um, all right. So we're working on the legs. Uh, you we see, we got the main curios here. Um, we've got some parts here uh the uh feet are done uh the the connectors that are going to connect into the waist are done um and we're working on these big fins which look odd if you didn't oh actually this is the wrong one sorry this is what we want i apologize um if you saw these and you're like why do these stick out of the knees you would say that if, if you didn't know that it transformed into a, a, a flight mode and then you're like oh uh, okay. I mean, I don't love it, but okay. Um, and we got our holographic parts here. They call them holographic. They're just like a little, you know, see-through plastic. We got to put the last of those on. So we'll do that. Uh, I'm going to start this stream off talking about a thing that I keep forgetting I want to talk about. So I'm just going to talk about it now so that I don't forget it. Um, it's been reminded, I've kind of mentioned it here and there, but I, I do want to get it out there. Um, there is a YouTube channel called The Gundam Store. The YouTube channel is called The Gundam Store. It is uh, it is the YouTube channel of Canadian Gundam, a obvious, somewhat obviously, Canadian, Canada-based uh, Gundam, you know, store. Sending out Gundam kits, doing its thing. Um, I do not know anything about this store. I cannot tell you if they are uh, quick, if they have good customer service, if they... Uh, are responsive to to issues uh, if their prices are great here's what I can tell you if you want to see a video uh, where big uh, uh, boxes are left in front of a, a building uh, and then the owner who is just behind a, a phone camera complains about possible damage to the model kit uh, boxes inside those big boxes this is the channel for you uh, if you want to see what other people in the world have ordered uh, and occasional shout outs to strangers you don't know, this is the channel for you. Because that seems to be the big thing about the Gundam channel or the I'm sorry, the Gundam store YouTube channel is this guy just like, oh, well, let's check out the damage. And then also like we're shipping orders today. We got this in. If you pre-ordered this, it's in. Um, while I do the, my actual favorite part of this channel is 
that he refers to the place because look cosmetic damage on a on a box like a puncture in a box not going to sell that for, for full price i appreciate that i know nothing else about the business practices other than that and i appreciate that choice i think that choice is excellent and what they should do so they sell it at a discount like you know uh Oh, I'm not sure I want someone broadcasting my gun to purchase last book. I believe that if you you can say in the order uh, if you would like a shout out and they will give you a shout out if you request it. They don't do it by default. And I, I agree with you. Uh, please don't know. Uh, as the the, uh, the quote from The Simpsons, don't tell anyone how I live. Yeah, don't tell don't tell anybody what my purchases are. I agree with you, last Uh But here's what I like. So something goes wrong. Uh, there's a the you know in service the box is damaged. They're not going to sell it at full price. Well, they're still going to sell it as is, and it's part of their website called the Boneyard. So it's not the graveyard; it's the Boneyard, because they're not dead. They're just bones. They're just bones. I don't know why it's the boneyard and not the graveyard. But if you want to pick up a slightly damaged box that maybe some of the internals might be a little messed up, you you know, use your uh, buyer beware. You can you could surf uh, uh, out the boneyard, uh, and then so then they'll say something like, "Well, here's some here's some more uh, high grades going to the boneyard," and it's just like, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Um, uh, uh, we are not going to do any markers on this because this is going to be fully covered. These pieces here will be full covered. And there is a part of it that isn't fully covered. We will hit that. Uh, battle damage Gundam kits. Indeed, dirty. Uh, also high dirty. Um, yeah, I kind of always just be, I'm always just in, uh, of the mind of like, well, um, uh, you just, yeah, you just chalk it up the battle damage and, you know, buyer beware. Here's the thing. I've gotten a lot of boxes that have got, come in damaged uh, in 2020 because Amazon, uh, if you just bought like a single kit, a lot of times it would end up in a bag, a mailer instead of a box, uh, which sucks. And yeah, you get yourself some damaged boxes and like it's fucking really annoying, but it happens, unfortunately. Uh, all right. So again, um. I'm going to I'm going to hold off on doing any panel lining on these pieces because I'm not sure what's going to get covered up and what won't. Uh, once we put on everything in it and the leg is pretty much done, if there is any gray that's being that's shown, I'll go and put uh, some marker on it. But there, although if it's just going to be covered up, there's no point. So I'm not going to do that. Um, just letting you know that was a choice because I could do it, but like you're not going to see it. So it's fine. Put that there, and we'll get the other one going. But yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, that. They don't, really, you know, they don't have a huge following or whatever. But I honestly think uh, I'm guessing a good portion of their of their views are people looking to see what might show up in the boneyard. Because if I was a Canadian uh, citizen or somebody uh, who was buying model kits in Canada, um, I would definitely. Uh, have notifications on so that when they sent a new video up, I would know. And then I would check the boneyard and constantly check the boneyard until those items showed up there looking for deals. Because um, also, I, I recognize that if I got a kit that was damaged that I paid whatever for, and I built it on stream and it was damaged, uh, that that could be a thing. Like, hey, let's check out this kit that I bought, you know, the as is. Uh, we could even like reference the video and be like, oh, this is what they said might have happened and, and all that. Like that could be kind of cool. Uh, oh, OK, so I have uh, at, as of right now and it's OK. We have dropped down to 49 subscribers, which is fine. I'm putting up the 49 out of 50 right now. The goal is to, to hit 50. No pressure. If you'd like to subscribe, I would love it. If you want to renew your subscription because you were gifted a sub and it lapsed, that would be great. If you want to gift a sub to somebody in the community and be a gift subber, you definitely could do that, and that would be rad as hell. You're under no obligation to do any of those things. But I would love to hit 50 subs, so we're putting it up in the top corner, and it stays in the top corner until we hit 50 subs. And if we drop below 49, the number changes down, whatever. Um, just letting you know we're doing it. These are things that are, are happening, and it's okay. 
Uh, all right, so these little dots go low, and this goes like this, and this goes on here. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been trying to... So I keep up with Gundam news sometimes, although there's a couple people on YouTube, like, you know, like anything else, right? There are people who are good at presenting, and there are people who are bad at presenting. There are a couple very good reviewers out there that do Gundam builds and talk about the kits. And they do a fantastic job, and it is very fun to hear what they have to say, and I look forward to, to their updates. And there are people that I'm like, this is not somebody that I am interested in uh, watching any more of their videos, you know? Uh, sometimes it's technique. Sometimes it's personality. Uh you know, it, it is what it is, and I think, like, it is important to, like, just, you know, know that, right? Like anything else, like, don't, don't watch something if you're not enjoying it. And I think that is, like, totally fair. Um, but, yeah, I've been trying to find some other people out there in the constant pursuit. And I, I, I know I'm not alone in this. I know I'm not alone in this, this constant pursuit of... I just, I need stuff to watch. I need things to engage in. Um, I found myself last night, I watched the Given movie again. Given is a fantastic uh, 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 romantic drama music uh, anime. Um, it is lovely. It is a story of people coming together to form a band with a couple of people still in school, a couple of people that, you know, I've graduated and moved on, but they're, they're pursuing music. There's other musicians. Uh, it is also a fantastic gay love story and beautiful and like heartbreaking and funny and adorable. And there's a movie, there's an 11 episode season and then a movie. And, uh, I found myself just watching the movie again and then just watching a bunch of scenes towards the end of it because uh, now I know what happens in it. So I wasn't like uh, so nervous to see how things would work out. And it's lovely. But like I'm running out of things to, to kind of engage with and enjoy. We're going to hit this because we know we're, we're going to see a lot of this white. So we'll hit this with the, with the gray right here because it'll be easier to get at. Uh, so we'll just do that there. We're just going to do some along there and then we'll hit that with that but yeah um i'm just running out of shit uh like r ran out of podcasts i had two podcasts that uh come out on saturday i listened to and i have it's saturday and i have listened to both of them and that's terrible uh i was like oh no i listened oh no no no, no. i listened to both what am i doing uh, it was a big mistake on my part. Should have savored them. But yeah, I am definitely like just fucking running out of podcasts and and videos and series. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I hope uh, I hope these people put stuff out. Uh, I've just been like, I, I'm at the point now, folks, I'll admit it. I'm at the point now where I'm watching video, old videos again. Just like, I don't know. I watched all this. Um, I, I've been watching the 8-Bit Guy. Um, I don't enjoy the, the, uh, the 8-Bit Guy's retrospectives on old console, or old, like, computer, uh, systems and stuff. I don't really enjoy those, but I do like his restorations. Uh, I like retro writing. I like seeing the results of retro writing and various other things. It's satisfying to watch... Uh, him take apart a keyboard, clean that keyboard, uh, and then make that clean board, uh, keyboard look new and then put them back together. Uh, watching a very yellowed system, uh, you know, an Apple II or whatever, uh, come out looking like new is satisfying. Uh, I actually... I mean, I was planning on doing it, but I got pumped up to do some cleaning around the house today just because I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, this is a different thing. This is like, you know, cleaning that needed to happen, but it still felt felt satisfying to, like, get some stuff done to be like, yes, I'm also going to clean and be satisfied. Um, but it's just that Saturday is a good day to do that. Also, I had to um, work on Pat Bear's Anime Club. Uh, 
And so this was procrastinating on doing that video, which I'm ha which turned out good. I'm happy with the video, but I was kind of procrastinating on working on it because um, I knew what I was going to do. And I had also it was just about getting it done. Um, but, yeah, I was uh, definitely procrastinating uh, today. But I got all my work done, got all my cleaning done. Uh, there's maybe, yeah, a hair more I've got to do, but whatever. It was it was good to get it done. It's just, pour, it poured rain. It rained all day. It was pouring. And so, the really, honestly, that's what I have right now, is I have stuff I would like to do. Um, there's still a lot of leaves in our backyard, and I want to put the mulcher attachment on the uh, lawnmower and drop it down low and then just uh, the wheels low uh, and just roll over all of the leaves that are there and kind of mulch as much as I can to make my life easier for raking. But if everything's wet, that's a terrible time to do that. So I have to wait and I don't, I just want to get it done. I'm only going to do it once this month. So I would like to just do it. Uh, but that has not happened. It is frustrating. Um, uh, yeah, that was basically it today. I filmed a video. I, um, I got, yeah, I got some prep work done on some other projects that I'm working on. Uh, yeah, little things, nothing, nothing major, nothing, nothing that I was like, you know, not, not a lot, not a lot going on in the old Pat Bear. I'll be honest with y'all. Um, I'm going a little stir crazy. I would love to go for a walk, but it is it's just gonna rain all the time and be wet out there. Uh, I know it could snow. It could have been snow. It's not gonna snow here. Could have been snow. I could be up north and dealing with the snow. But also, like, I'd rather deal with the snow than the rain. I'll go for a walk in the snow. I'll bundle up and go out there and do my thing. Uh, I'll take care of all that. Uh, but right now, I can't do that. I can't do anything. Because uh, it's always just going to keep raining. And when it's not, look, when it's not raining, it's still going to be wet out there. But I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to get out of this house and move around a bit uh, for my own mental health. I've got to be able to do that. Uh, Julie says, I looked at carpet samples from my apartment. It was nice to get out, but did take 20 minutes to clear the ice and snow off my car. Yeah, that's a that's a time sink right there. A lot of prep work. Um, hell yeah, get that carpet. Uh, Ristvan says, Portland area. We had snow the last few days. Uh, here, it was a layer of ice with dusting of snow. The kids on sleds were were sliding pretty far. Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. Last week says, I haven't watched much 8-bit uh, guy, but I did get into his home studio build. The video's network setup is pretty impressive, too. Yes. Uh, the studio build stuff is all right. Yeah, I'm just not super into his retrospectives on consoles or, sorry, you know, old computer machines that don't really hit my fancy or pique my interest. Um, uh, wet my whistle. That's the least, that's the least good one. Um, but yes, I, I do enjoy the, the kind of like retro bright cleaning things. Um, also, uh, I found this out about myself. I want voiceovers or I want live commentary while people do things. I'm not here for the random music or just sounds of the cleaning uh, or the device you're using uh, in a montage, you know, sped up. Like I don't those those um, tool restorations on the one on one side. I want to say uh, some of the people that do tool restorations don't know what the fuck they're doing and are ruining old pieces of machinery uh, in order to make them look cool in a modern context, but are just destroying that piece of equipment. And so I don't like that. Um, and two. I want people to talk and I don't want to just listen to machine sounds. Um, I'm not an ASMR guy. I am uh, in at all, but I am somebody that likes when people are talking about things, especially if they have a passion or a knowledge about it. And I really want to hear about it. Uh, I will be shocked if we actually get five inches of snow. Hell yeah. Well, I hope you get some snow. I mean, not too much snow. Um, uh, Dirty says, supposed to snow here tomorrow and get down to four the seven, uh, wow. Uh, in the middle of Texas. Yeah. You guys, y'all are in Texas. Yes. Well, uh, stay safe out there. Be cool. Remember the, the golden rule. If it doesn't snow normally in your area, 
then no, none of the drivers know what to do. Because they don't remember, the or the last time it snowed, they fucked around, uh, and it was bad. But yeah, you always have to say, like, well, if it doesn't snow here, or if it doesn't flood here, or anything else, you just have to know nobody knows what they're doing, and everyone is going to drive like a fucking asshole. So just be careful out there, because people are ridiculous. <laughs> and just, yeah. They're just not going to do things right and they're not going to be safe and they're going to, you know, just spin out and get stuck in ditches and get stuck in snow banks and just all kinds of bullshit because they don't know what they're doing. They're just going to be assholes. Uh, all right. Uh, let me put something there. Yeah, we'll do it like that. Great, so we're just hitting this with the marker because we know this will be seen because it's the armor. Uh, I'm thankful Ohio got uh, gets enough weather that people know how to handle it, but not so much that it's a pain. Yes, oh, you, you live in the, you know, yeah, that's good. That's good to hear. Uh, you live in that kind of like in between. Um, oh, we had freezing rain Wednesday and there were 100... Last we get 133 car pileup. I think I saw a clip about that, about how they were just like, we don't know when this stretch of highway is going to reopen because it was so many cars. They were like, uh, we're not saying it's a delay. We're saying it's a closure because it was that bad. Took my dad 12 hours to make a four-hour drive on Friday when this started. Damn. Yeah. Look, here's the thing. Do I miss shoveling? No. Do I miss wet, you know, feet because snow got into my boots and it's all gross and I'm feeling like, ah, God damn it, what I do this? What am I doing? No, I don't miss any of that. But do I miss snow reflecting off of street lights, walking in there? Do I miss the quiet and just like this like kind of sereneness that happens in New York? Yeah, I miss that. I miss that so much. Uh, it's beautiful. So I do miss snow, but I miss snow in the context of living in an apartment and not having to deal with it, because uh, that's awful. In Portland, when it snows, the shitty, the city shuts down. I said the shitty, but the city shuts down. Yes, and they're not wrong for shutting down, because they're like, hey, well, it snowed, and everybody stay home, because it, it when it snows, it's bad. Um... When I was at the university at Albany, I was there for a year. I don't talk much about it because there's not much to say. Uh, the things I remember most about the University of Albany was that I hated it. I hated being there. Um, we uh, The only time I ever saw a sporting event there, I went to our homecoming football game, which we lost, and then we won an away game the next week, uh, and that will always stick with me. Um, I, uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy my time there. The mall is called the Cross Gates Mall because it is the shape of an X. So it is the Cross Gates Mall. Um, and, uh, the rule was the school didn't shut down unless the bridges, uh, were snowed through and teachers couldn't get to campus. If teachers couldn't get to campus, then we would cancel, uh, classes. But if they could get to class there, even if it was snowing, we were going to have classes. Um, yeah, I didn't enjoy my time there. I went because my deal with my folks was go go to college for a year. And then if you don't like it, you can go to acting school in New York, which is what I wanted to do right out of high school. But instead did a year at uh, a regular college. Um, the school I was at, had a really nice theater. They did not have a theater program, but they did have a nice theater. And so, and even though they didn't have the theater as a major, I should say, they didn't have a major in theater, but they did have a, a really nice facility because they used to have a, a theater major. So I did uh, scene shop stuff there, which is where I learned a lot of the stuff that would later help me out as a tech person uh, in New York uh, or, you know, in my, in my comedy career. Uh, that helped me out quite a bit. But they did not have uh, the program that I was looking for, which was the acting stuff. 
Um, but yeah, I got really, I took scene shop, uh, freshman year and I really loved it. I got, I got a lot of practical knowledge in building set stuff and, and all that, which I had some practical stuff in, in, of like running lights and all of that, um, in, uh, high school because, uh, it was years after I graduated from high school that the school I went to got an auditorium. So there were two gymnasiums at the school. There was the big gym and the small gym. Great names for them. Um, and uh, the small gym, a couple months before our productions, we would get control of and we would have to... They, in storage, there's the big stage that folded up. This classical portable stage. We set up the stage. Then we would go from storage, take storage out, set up the lights. We would set up uh, uh, the, the spotlight and, and rigging. We would we would have to do all of that. We would have to you know build all the sets and right on the stage and take stuff out of storage and do all that. And so I got very good at um, at that kind of stuff because that's where I started. Because you know generally, unless you are fucking really talented. When you come in in a high school environment, or you're going to performance arts, you know, school, something like that. But if you're just a regular high school, freshmen generally don't get roles. You, you're you in the chorus. You maybe have a line or two. You're kind of feeling it out, unless you are incredible, uh, especially if you're like a really good singer. But if you're not a really good singer, which I was not, um, you end up just being in the chorus. So I did a lot of tech stuff. I was doing both, um, but I had a lot because I had a lot of free time. So, because I didn't have to learn a whole lot of lines. So I was able to help out with a lot of that kind of stuff. And I, and I ended up being pretty good at it. I didn't want to give up performing, but I, at the very least, I knew how to do a lot of that stuff. I had to do a lot of uh, uh, technical theater work. And then also, I was self-aware enough to know that, like, if we were going to do some straight plays or some comedies, then I could probably get some roles because I'm pretty good at that. But if we we're doing um, uh, musicals, I wasn't going to get any roles. I was going to get the uh, whatever song they put in the show for the old man to do, like the old, you know, the old actor. You, you, you If you see musicals, you know, there's this role. There's always a role where someone could kind of just talk through it if they want. Uh, in big productions, um, you're in how to succeed in business without really trying. There is the owner of the company. He sings a little bit of Brotherhood of Man. Uh, is there really a Brotherhood of Man, a benevolent Brotherhood of Man, uh, a noble tie that binds all human hearts and minds into a Brotherhood of Man? It's a solo in the song. It's the only thing in the whole show that the guy sings. And that role is invented for old men who used to be big shows, you know, stealers and musicals, but can't really do it anymore. I would get lots of those roles. Uh, your Zoltan Karpathy in My Fair Lady. He's in two scenes, and one of those scenes, he dances. Um, uh, your Miles Gloriosus in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. He comes in at the end of Act 1 by yelling from the back of the auditorium or you know, theater or whatever, stand aside, everyone. I take large steps. He sings two songs. One of those songs is about how awesome he is. And one of those songs is about how sad he is that his uh, expected bride is dead because she didn't get a chance to be married to him. Uh, he fucking rules. Uh, but yeah, those roles are meant for, um, for older gentlemen of the theater. Uh, so I would get those roles, and that's fine. Um, but I didn't want those roles. I wanted to be Senex in Funny Thing Happened Away to the Forum, the dad that uh, of Hero. I want to be that guy. That character rules. Um, uh, in Music Man, I was... Uh, Music Man was my freshman year of high school. So I played... Man number two in uh, 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 in salesman number one. Hey, what's up, Tony? So I was salesman number one in Music Man. Then I was also like background. Like I was one of the kids in the library uh, that does the dances during Shapoopy. Uh, still one of the best names for a song ever of all time. Uh, but yeah, I was in the opening number 
of uh, Music Man where all the salesmen are talking, and I would have the thing where it was like, uh, shit. I, I, cause the thing is like, it's high school. So it just like lives in my brain, like high school musical stuff lives in my brain. Um, it is to the effect of, you can talk, you can talk, you can pick, you can talk, you can talk, 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 pick, 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 you can talk all you want, but it's different than it was. And then someone says, no, it ain't, no, it ain't, but you got another territory. Uh, my memory is terrible. Lastbrook, that's what I'm saying. I don't have, I don't remember the name of the girl that I liked my freshman year of college. Her name is gone from my brain. She was in the friend group, and I had a crush on her. And I cannot tell you her name, but I can tell you uh, that yeah, like what lines I had. Um, I can tell you that as Milis Gloriosus, I said in the final song, the reprise of uh, 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 of the of the main theme, uh, I get the twins, they get the best because the idea was we were revealing that the courtesan twins ended up with Miles Gloriosus. So I know the line, I got the twins, they get the best. And then the next line is, I get a family, I get a rest, which are other people singing. I remember that. Uh, oh man, a funny thing happened uh, is the only show I saw on Broadway at a Nathan Lane and Whoopi. Hell yeah. Nathan, oh, so here's the thing about it. Look, I'm going to talk about uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum for a second. Uh, ooh, we are having connection issues. Uh-oh. People watching this on YouTube later. What's up, YouTube? We'll not run into this problem, but people are watching now are just... Yeah. Uh, we had a hiccup there. I apologize, folks. Uh, usually don't drop frames on a Saturday when I am wired, so I apologize for that blip in the connection. Uh, I guess the internet out there was just like, oh, don't talk about a funny thing happening on the way to the forum right now, but I'm going to. I'm going to tell you a thing about a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. It is one of the only musicals that exists where the main character, the main male character in the show, is not the romantic lead. Because it was written for a guy that did that like was a big deal, which is why you have Nathan Lane in forum as Pseudolus. Pseudolus is the slave. He's the smart like slave who like figures out who ends up becoming like uh, figures out how to free himself and all this other stuff. Hero is the young romantic lead. So it is one of the few shows where you, you don't have that, which is why it, part of why I liked it. One, also I got to be a character named Miles Gloriosus, who sings about how awesome he is, um, and says, stand aside, everyone. I take large steps, and then makes his appearance, and it fucking rules. Uh, I, there's, there are things to like about that show, but I wanted to be Senex in that. Um... Yeah, I did. I did some some musical stuff and was happy to do it. Uh, they did Bye Bye Birdie the year I, after I graduated. I'm kind of glad about that. Or not Bye Bye Birdie. They did Guys and Dolls the year I after I graduated my high school, and I was happy to not be in Guys and Dolls because uh, I already wore suits as it was. Uh, okay, I will tell you this. First, we'll make sure my uh, if everything good on the on your end, folks. Is everybody seeing everything? Everything looking good here. Let me know in the chat if things are good because we did have that blip there where I suddenly went from a go uh, green bar to a red bar. Just making sure everything's okay. Gear, let me know in chat if everything's looking good. Uh, but uh, what was I was saying something and I can't remember. I memory just bad. Just lost what I was going to say about doing something. I can't remember, folks. I'm sorry. I apologize. But yeah, throw throw me a throw me an emote or or a, everything's okay or looking good or a thumbs up in uh, chat. Let me know that uh, we're doing all right here on the old streaming streams. Um, while I think about what I was talking about about doing musicals or plays or whatever, I don't remember. Um, oh. Uh, looks fine to me. Great. Thank you, Lashbrook. Here's what I wanted to say. This, this right here, uh, had a hiccup. Yes, thank you, everybody. This right here is because I did a play. Uh, obviously, I don't usually have, this is getting thick or whatever, but the beard. Uh, I have a photo of myself from my sophomore year of high school that was taken weeks before I would grow a beard that I would never give up. I grew a full beard. I didn't shave my neck. I didn't shave anything. I grew a full, big beard because I was playing 
uh, Zoltan Karpathy in My Fair Lady. As I said, he has two scenes. He dances, and that's it. In Pygmalion, he has more to say, but in they they cut they basically cut out everything that he would have in uh, in My Fair Lady. Uh, he is another expert in linguistics, and he dances and interviews and talks to uh, Eliza, and comes out of it saying like, "Oh, what a lovely woman!" Whatever. Like she tricks him, convinces him uh, that she is uh, who she says she is. Uh, which is, you know, it's cool. Uh, all right, we're going to build, be careful not to insert it here. We are building, I think these are leg boosters, so we'll get that going. Um, but yeah, uh, I grew a full beard because I wanted to, because I, I in my head, this big um, Hungarian man would have a beard. Um, and there's no, there was no good reason for me to do it other than I wanted to see if I could. And then I never looked back. And uh, there have been periods where I have had uh, zero beard. But usually that is for some sort of production or some of some kind. Um, I had to... I was supposed to... I did a video, uh, the 12 Santas of Christmas for College Humor years ago. And they were just, and it was all like the facial hairs. It was all, every Santa had like, you know, a mustache or this one has a, a big beard, but it's got like colors in it. Uh, and they were like, oh, you're going to be the, the Van Dyke. You're going to do, we'll just do your facial hair. And I was like, hell yeah. And they were like, just like shave your, shave the sides of your face or whatever, you know, like, but don't leave it there and we'll just do it that. We'll put some powder in it. So you look great. Uh, but then, like, the week before, Streeter, uh, who is an actor and writer for College Humor, uh, read the script, and he was like, oh, I want to play that. So they recast me. So they had to put – so I had to shave everything off and put a fake beard on. Um, and I get, I did get to play a character who was who, uh, who was giving uh, this kid uh, – trying to give this kid Yu-Gi-Oh cards and then was saying, oh, I'm going to keep a couple of these. So it was a fun bit, but I did have to fully shave – and I was very frustrated because it did not pay enough for me to deal with that. And I was mad just because Streeter was like, oh, I want to do this. And so he got to it. I'm shaky fist. Because uh, sometimes you just got a shaky fist. You can't do anything about it. He was a staff writer on the on, for College Humor. I was happy to be asked to be in a thing. It happens. Um, let's see. Uh, four. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, that, that happens. Uh, my major rule is, uh, if you want me to shave it, I don't shave for auditions. I don't shave to see how it looks. If you ask me, well, what does it look like when you're shaved? I will tell you, if you want me to be heavier and younger, I will shave you then, then you pay me to shave, but I never shave for, uh, auditions. Uh, I would shave for parts if it required it. I'd be fine doing that. Uh, generally, if that part is a paid job and not just like me doing someone a favor, because uh, I don't like to, uh, I don't like it when I'm when I have a shaved face. So, I'm not gonna do that for free, or like twenty five dollars or fifty dollars or whatever like the easy thing is. Whatever the this is the least amount we can pay somebody to be here. You're an extra and free food. Be like, oh, well, then I don't need to do it. It's okay. It's fine. I don't have to do these things. Especially when they were just like fun, cool things where you're like, oh, we're we're filming at, you know, like this This is for no money. Uh, we'll, pay, we'll pay you in dinner and we're uh, you're going to be a background and we're shooting at this like fake castle that somebody built in order to uh, rent out to film studios. Uh, and we're doing like a World of Warcraft parody and you're going to be in the background. You'll be wearing a helmet and no one will be able to see it's you. And I was like, that sounds like a thing I'll do on my day off. Sure, I'll go do that. I did a bunch of bullshit like that. Where it would be like, oh, we're going to pay you in $50. Like there was a period in my life where I was like, sure. Also, I knew all the directors at College Humor. So I would often end up saying yes to that. And they would give me a line or something to do. There was a, a video series they did where I went to be an extra and then the camera person or the, the director was like, oh, was a friend of mine. It was like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, 
hey, we'll make you the bartender. You don't have any lines, but you'll be in three shots. You just have to stand there at the bar thing and you'll be in frame. Uh, and I would be like, great, thank you. And then somebody that I went to high school with would be like, hey, I saw you in a college humor video. And it'd be like, yes, you did. Thanks for looking for, looking for me. Um, I did a lot of that shit. Um, I was happy to do it. And then I got some lines, which was nice. Like They would give me things to do. There's a pretty great um, uh, uh, video. This is, these are old videos. But there's a pretty great um, video that was about uh, Twilight, where I play a vampire with a camcorder uh, that's filming, like, you know, trying to catch Bella's first kiss or whatever. Uh, and I don't remember why I was doing it, but, I, but why. I don't remember what the joke was, but it was like, that was an early, like, oh, that, that video, like a million people watched that video that I was in. That's a weird thing. Uh, I would end up with a lot of, lot of weird shit like that. Fun things. That was always fun. I played an FYE employee in one of those, like, meetings of the mall people. And I, and I would start doing, like, I, I think I was, like, doing a speech from Lord of the Rings, but as an FYE employee, which was pretty fun. I don't know, I got to do a few things that, that were cool, and I was happy to be asked to be in things. Back when they did videos and did sketches in New York, and when they were a thing that existed, uh, I, I would end up in a lot of stuff, which was very cool. Always happy to do. All right, uh, get these assembled here, then we'll hit them with some marker. I want to look ahead to see how these where these go. Go here, and that goes into there, and that goes on the side. Okay, yeah, so we're going to hit these with a, we'll wait on this, then we'll probably hit it with some marker. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I want to really, like, talk about today? I don't know. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I don't have anything for that. You're here. We're on the stream. As I said, I decided not to try to integrate something uh, to make something happen with, like, oh, I'm going to build this thing, and then that'll say that's my big valentine's day connection when i didn't go for anything like that uh couldn't think of anything that would work um yeah i don't have any valentine's day plans i'm gonna watch wrestling there's a nxt uh special tomorrow i still have a month because i got it for the royal rumble so i still have some time left on my month long because i already canceled it it'll be over in a month uh subscription to the network and so I'll uh, watch that tomorrow because I like NXT there's some good stuff there so I'll watch that but that's kind of like definitely my plan uh, so this got a function that's kind of cool here you can press down on this and then uh, you get a little booster popping out here it's pretty neat uh, I'm going to kind of get this all together and then see where I want to put some uh, markers on it because I'm not sure exactly how this all comes together so those go together there now we'll build the right leg here. What's going? Uh, what's up? Hey, what's up, Shax? I'm having a pretty good day. I, I did some uh, work around the house, which was good, getting some of that done. And now I'm uh, model kit building, working on the legs here. Happy about that. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. We will take a pause for the cause in a, in a couple minutes, talk about ways you can support the channel. We'll do that every single build stream. Um, I do want to say, uh, you know, because I'm going to try to promote this as best I can. My bonus stream on Wednesday is Jackbox. It's been a while since we played some Jackbox. So we are going to play some Jackbox Party Pack uh, uh, 7. Oh, Shaq's just subscribed with Prime. That's three months on a three-month streak saying ham time. Thank you so much, Shaq. I'm going to hit the applause there. And then we can turn this off because we have hit 50 subs again. Thank you, Shaq, for that. Appreciate it very much. Um, let's throw the barricade leg of the scythe moat, folks, and thank Shaq for helping us out there. And also, that means, yes, we hit the 50, and Dirty wants me to hit that gong, and I will hit that gong. So the gong is coming. <laughs> hit that gong. We did it. But yeah, now we're at 50, which is great. That's kind of where I would like to be as far as subscribers go. Uh, that is our current goal, which is great. Harold thrown in there, of course. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, we'll take a pause for calls. Uh, yeah, so uh, Wednesday, playing Jackbox games. Feel free to come by for that. Playing Party Pack 7. Um, indeed. 
Uh, that'll be very fun. All right. While this is together, let's get we'll get these layers on and then we'll do it there. Uh, we're gonna we will be putting some ink on here. So we need A8 and G7 is over here. So we'll get that going. Great, great, great. Uh, J and A. Okay. Um, and then uh, a week from yesterday, so next Friday, Friday the 19th, I'm doing it. Next week, I'm streaming five times because I'm doing a bonus stream that is not game related because I still want to do the game related bonus stream. But I am doing a Friday night stream, a rare Friday night stream, because we will be, uh, I will be, and you can if you want to, uh, I will be watching the. Conrunchy Roll Anime Awards. So if you want to hang out for that, you're more than welcome to come out for the Crunchy Roll Anime Awards. Watch along. I will be streaming my thoughts as it happens. Uh, and you're welcome to come hang out for that. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, as we watch and I yell about whatever thing that, you know, basically uh, when a couple who... When, when, basically, I'm definitely going to yell at best couple. Like, look, things I don't like are going to win categories. Things I like are going to lose categories. That's the whole thing. It is what it is. But when uh, the categories that bother me the most are the best couple category, because there are couple, there are people nominated in that category more than any other category that do not belong in that category. Like, saying that... Uh, well, uh, yeah, you know, uh, 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 the Misfit at Demon King Academy. That's in the comedy category. There are jokes in that show, but it's not a comedy. Like, it's definitely not a comedy. Uh, it does not belong in the comedy category. I do not know why it is there. It is a weird choice. Uh, so I'm like, that's weird. But the best couple last year, they're up for it again is the main two characters in Love is War, uh, Kagisama. And they're not a couple. The whole point of that show is these two people that like each other trying to convince the other to admit their own feelings so they win. Uh, they win the relationship, quote-unquote. They're not a couple. That's the point of the fucking show, and they won Best Couple last year. Also up this year are Marie and uh, Katrina... From my next life as a villainous, all roots lead to doom. And the issue with that is, they're not a couple. Marie is one of the many characters that has an interest and is in love with uh, Katrina. But she's not in love with anyone. And she doesn't know that she is the center of a harem. A, you know? So I'm just like, that's not... That should not be nominated for best couple. They're not a couple. But whatever. There's always that that category is the one that I'm always just like, meh. Then my favorite character, there, there, you know, there's some people that aren't nominated for things and some things that I'm like, Kakashigoto is very good. It's very funny, but it should be in the best drama category. Like, there's just stuff that I'm like, meh. Uh, I'm just yeah. Not pleased with, and we'll see. All right, so we're going to put uh, some marker on this. We'll get some marker on this, and then we will uh, do a pause for the cause in a moment. But yeah, that's next Friday. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. Uh, the uh, awards kick off at 8 p.m. Eastern, so I'm going to start the stream at 7.30 so that people have a chance to kind of come in and hang out, and then I can like kind of go through the categories really fast, or at least the important ones, uh, and get to those, like being able to talk about you know, anime of the year or whatever. Or like best animation and being like, why is there, because there's always like a few things where you're like, no, I don't think this that show is one of the best shows of the year. I don't know why it was nominated. That, that kind of stuff. You're just like, what? What are you talking about? I don't know. All right, so we'll just do that. We'll get in there. But yeah, it's fun to watch it with people, so I'll be doing that. Uh, whenever you get the chance, can you send the Patreon link in the chat? I can't find anywhere. Yes, Shax, I'll do that right now. I will also do it uh, when we take the pause for the cause in a couple of minutes once I'm done with uh, doing some of these colors here or uh, doing some of these markers. But I'll put it in the chat right now. Um, 
the link. But yeah, I always do that uh, in there, but I will certainly also do that right now. Let me show that link. Uh, it is just my name, but I will put that right there. Uh, indeed. Uh, Patreon.com slash Pat Bear is the address uh, for that. And of course, I'll, I'll get into talking about that in a little bit. But right now, I am just going to finish up doing some panel lines here, and then we will uh, take a pause for the call. So walk away so you can support the stream. As always, always got to talk about that, but I only do it once per stream. That is my that is the goal, folks. Is just do it once to give you the uh, uh, you know the chance to, if you want to support what I do, the opportunity of ways you can do that. Um, and as always, you're under no obligation to do so. These are just you know ways you can do that if you want. And we'll do that. Okay, let me hit the eraser on this, clean it up, and then we'll we'll take our pause for the cause. As it is leg day, so we are doing some leg stuff here. We're going to try to finish up the legs, and then I think we're going to jump the weapons and go to the shield uh, and try to finish the shield tonight as well, but we'll see how we do. But Because I would like, you know, we'll definitely get body complete, but I would like to finish the shield up if I can. Uh, but if we don't, we don't, and that's okay. That's also okay. All right, and that's nice and cleaned up. And still got to do whatever that is. Parts of the legs still to do. Um, okay. So, folks, we are going to take a pause for the cause. I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel. You are under no obligation to do so. These are optional things. If you would like to, you're more than welcome to. First and foremost, let's throw the barricade, the leg of the site, the moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw those emotes in. Let the people know you're a subscriber, and that is a way you can support the channel using cash money. Or you could, if you wanted to, use your Prime Gaming token because you have Amazon Prime. You linked it with your Twitch. Then you can support me that way. Uh, gifting a sub. You could join the Gift Sub Leaderboard. Aristophan is the only Gift Subber this month. You could join in with uh, uh, Aristophan if you'd like. You're under no obligation, of course, to do so, but you can if you want to. Another way to support is through Bits and Coins. You can join our, our Bits and Coins Leaderboard uh, with Chihuahua Pugs and Dirty and Harold. You could join there, H-Bomb. Uh, join there if you wanted to uh, do that. Bits and Coins, always appreciated. Gifting subs, always appreciated. Subscribing. Uh, if you aren't following me on here, you can do that. That's an easy way to uh, support what I do. Um, so now I'll talk about way, other ways you can support the channel. Uh, I mentioned my Patreon, but I'll also put it in there. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, what's up, YouTube? Uh, hello, YouTubers. Uh, you can, uh, if you'd like, just go and uh, check out all the links I'm going to be sharing here. I mentioned I have a Patreon. There's a $1 tier, a $3 tier, a $5 tier, and a $10 tier. So less than uh, Twitch, more than Twitch. Everything I make through Patreon and Twitch goes into buying model kits. I get that payout. I take that money. I put it towards buying model kits because I got to keep doing that. Uh, if you wanted to, it, monthly uh, help is not something that you can do or not something you want to do. One-time donations would be rad. You can, uh, you can uh, buy something or send me some money. I'll put it towards buying model kits. That's my guarantee. Uh, that everything that comes in goes through that. So there's some options there. More options we've got is, if you're like, well, Pat, I like what you're building here, but what if you built what I want you to build? Well, you can put your money where your mouth is, and you can buy something off my Amazon wish list. We'll go take a look at that right now. Uh, if you buy something from my wish list, uh, I will build it before anything in my backlog. I got a master grade there. I got a couple high grades. Forget that. I'll build what you bought. So I've got inexpensive Lego sets. I've got these nano block things that I still haven't tried, but... I will build at some point. I've got uh, uh, high grades and master grades and all kinds of different stuff that I will build uh, and you know put together because you spent the money on it. Uh, and as I said, it'll jump the queue. I'll even make a video where I talk about the thing you bought uh, and say thank you for buying this and build it on stream. And there's equip equipment on the bottom. Alternatively, if you were like, Pat, I would love to do that. Um, but I don't want to buy something through Amazon. I get that. I totally understand that. The other option is you could buy a gift card from USA Gundam Store. They're based out of Florida. They're who I buy model kits from quite often. Uh, where I put my pre-orders in generally. Um, you go to USA Gundam Store, you'll be able to buy a gift card there. And then you buy a gift card, they send you a code in the email. Uh, in an email. Then you copy that code and send it to me. Uh, that could be uh, through a DM on Twitter because my DMs are open. Or a uh, whisper here on Twitch. 
those are options you could do if you'd like. You're under no obligation to do those things, of course. None of these things um, you want to do, but you can. And also, if you send me some money and I buy something, I will treat it like you bought something from Amazon and make a video where I talk about it. And thank you. Um, let's see. What do I got to say next? Uh, I have a Discord. If you want to support me and you don't want to spend a single penny, join my Discord. I post photos after every build stream. People post photos of the things they're working on. I post links to my videos that I also tweet out. You can watch stuff from there. It's a nice little community. People post things they're working on. It's very chill. There are days where no one posts, and it's just very relaxed. I will have a new Pat Bears Anime Club up on Monday, but I've got uh, the latest episode, or the last episode, uh, up there right now. So if you want to watch that, you can go to Pat Bears Anime Club and check that out. Uh, I also have a uh, oh, check says Discord group is very helpful if you're new to Gunpla. Yeah, uh, people are very informative, and uh, you know it, it's a nice little community of people. And also, like it, it's not it doesn't bog you down. You don't have to like mute channels or whatever. Uh, people also promote the stuff they're working on because there's a space for that. Um, another YouTube video you could check out is Bear with Me. Bear with Me is a video series where I watch things and give my honest first impression reaction to videos. Somebody sent me a link. Uh, about a weird cat video and um, it, it went places. Uh, also, I'm going to start saying this here because it legitimately helps. If you want to support what I do, a thing that costs zero dollars is like and comment on my YouTube. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay. I would love it if you subscribed and turn your notifications on, the be ring the bell and all that. But literally, if you watch a video that I make and you like it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, you can also hit the dislike button. It does not hurt my feelings. Um, leave a comment if you're feeling like you want to. But that literally does help. Um, I have noticed, the big thing I have noticed with YouTube, and maybe I'll talk about this in, in you know another you know, stream, um, is once I moved my VODs to another channel and I don't upload uh six hours of build streams a week all of a sudden my shorter videos are reaching a new audience and a bigger audience and i'm getting more comments and more and more uh likes and that's feeding more people seeing it and i might get another payout from from youtube from adsense because i'm very close to the minimum pay, uh hundred dollar threshold for a payout i'm like 90 something dollars in it's I went from 70 to 90 in like a month and it's fucking great because it's nothing but $100 coming in means I can buy three high grades or two master grades. Uh, so $100 is huge. So yeah, like and comment uh, if you're so obliged of my YouTube stuff. It would mean a lot to me, especially on youtube.com slash Pat Bear where I put my Bear With Me, it's a weekly series, and I put my Bearing the List, uh, not Bearing the List, that's what I used to do, and then my Pet Bears Anime Club. Because uh, it literally is, it's free to like things on YouTube. Uh, and do it for other people too, don't just do it for me. Uh, I won't rant like that every week, but I am, you know, I do want people to, to watch those things. Uh, because it is having a actual impact right now. Um also, 500 plus people have watched my uh, bearing the list where I rank Dragon Maid characters. I don't know why it suddenly became one of my most popular videos of, of 2021, but definitely my most popular 2021, one of the most popular 2020. I don't know why it's a year old and it's just ranking characters of a show, but it did really well. And that's great. I'm going to drink some water. And we'll get back to building. So over here, I'll turn this out. Uh, all right. So I'm going to assemble some more of this uh, here of the of the uh, leg that we got to put together. Um, and we will get this piece here. Uh, and I'm going to talk about some anime that came out in the last couple of days. Uh, OK, uh, real quick, important, kind of important note, not really important. Um the first six episodes of an anime called Vlad Love, which is a romantic comedy about a girl that loves donating blood who meets a girl who is a vampire and then shit gets weird. Uh, that show, uh, six episodes 
went out today, but I didn't notice. I thought it was coming out tomorrow, but apparently it's come. It came out today on Saturday, so I didn't notice that before this before uh, uh, the stream started. So I didn't watch any of it. I'm gonna watch a couple episodes to talk about on Monday, which is good because I have less shows that I talk about on Mondays anyway. So now I can talk about that. Uh, but yeah, the plan is I'm gonna watch that tomorrow, uh, so I will be able to chat with you about that series. Um, and hopefully I will have, you know, uh, something. I don't think I'm going to watch all six, uh, you know, in two days, but I'll watch a couple of them so I can at least say, like, if I want to keep watching it. Um, but yeah, Vlad Love looks funny and weird. And also, I need more queer shit going on in my anime because right now there is a queer character in a romantic comedy show that I watch, which is cool. And uh, the main two characters in some sort of horror creepy pasta uh, show. Uh, are apparently uh, fall in love with each other uh, slowly over the course of the series, but I'm never going to watch it because it is about girls with guns fighting creepypasta stuff, and uh, that just does, is not something I want to watch. But I do want to watch that queer shit, because that queer shit is good shit. So, uh, yeah, so I will check out Vlad Love pretty soon. Uh, all right, this is going to go... Like this. I don't know if... Uh, basically, I'm going to hit this with black just to see if it uh, makes these parts a little shiny. I don't know if this is going to work. This is a very dark gray. But I'm going to hit this with black and we'll see if that makes some of these things pop. Uh, again, because this kit transforms, you do have to hit every side. Like, uh, you know, if you're just displaying a kit, you're not going to hit every piece of it with, uh, with a, a marker. But because this thing... Uh, has a transformation and becomes like a has a flight mode. You gotta hit it with with color uh, everywhere. All right, now I'm going to talk to you about so I'm a spider. So what? Uh, things are popping off here. At the end of the last episode, the cliffhanger moment was that the hero, the world's hero, who is the older brother of one of the other Isakad kids, uh, but he's he's not an Isakad person. He's just the world's hero. His name is I forget. I uh, wrote it down later, but he's the world hero. I think it's Julius. His name is Julius. He's the world's hero. Um, he and his party are in the same larger dungeon that our spider's in. Uh, and then they say that he's tracking a spider monster. And we're like, well, our spider's pretty cool, but our spider's definitely not like world hero worthy. So is this a different spider? We don't know. But it is like, uh-oh. Um... Uh, so our spider fights a very tough eel. It's a, and, uh, she has the, a move called foresight, which basically lets her see stuff in the future. And it, te it like temporarily, she has a move that can strengthen her web. So they don't immediately burn up. And she uses that. Uh, and then she builds a, uh, a, like basically like a shelter out of the eel so that she can evolve, which is great. Uh, because she almost dies. She basically almost dies this time. But luckily does it for the anime. It's a good thing that she does not die. Because she is the main character of our story. Uh, but she has a moment where, yeah, she is like definitely almost dead. Uh, wait. What happened here? Did I do this wrong? I did yeah this goes on yes I think I've done I'm sorry I'm gonna double back here uh put that on there yes this goes on this piece here Sorry, I definitely messed up a piece here. We need G8. That's what wrong. I screwed that up, folks. I'm fixing it now. Don't worry, I'm fixing it. This is G8. It's going to go on here. This on the wrong thing. That goes on here. Anyway, uh, our spider um, basically evolves 
and uh, she gets some spikes, like you'd see almost like on a crab shell, and her front legs are like scythes, and she looks, uh, she looks pretty fucking rad now. She's look, she's looking pretty fucking awesome. Uh, so I'm, I'm into it. Uh, she's looking tougher and more monstery and less like just like a spider. Uh, hey, what's up, John Robert? I'm talking about some anime stuff I've been watching while I'm working on this kit. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Uh, but yes, I definitely was assembling this incorrectly, and now I'm assembling it correctly. Um, anyway, so she uh, she's starting to look pretty badass. She's got uh, well, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, she got a whole lot of cool new skills. Um, and, uh, now she has, she can use detection, which she could use before it used to hurt her. And basically I, I want to describe this as, as best I can describe it, she can now see shit like it's the matrix. Basically, you know, when Neo can see into the code, she now can kind of do that. And it is, it is definitely at this point where I will say that our main character, the spider, and so I'm a spider, so what, is definitely more like a overpowered main character. It took a, it took six episodes, but she's basically pretty overpowered. Uh, and then the hero and his party are after a spider called the Nightmare's Vistage, which is definitely like uh, an unbelievably strong thing, like a unquestionably strong, this is not our character, uh, spider. But they managed to defeat it, um... Because it looks like a so in the opening songs, there's been a character that we didn't know who it was. We now know that's a demon lord. Apparently, the demon lord who runs this thing was mad that this character, this spider, apparently the spider was being like, uh, you know, gotten too big for its britches. So she basically makes it pause so it can be murdered. So she inadvertently helps out. Uh, now, hopefully, she's gonna like our spider. Oh, and then also, one of the Isekai kids is probably going to turn on the other Isekai kids. But I, as always, don't care about them as much as I care about uh, our main character, who is the spider. Uh, I, I always compare this with Arifuerta because it is very similar about, like, one underpowered character in a group that got isekai is, like, ends up is the main character and ends up becoming pretty fucking awesome. And that is true of this show. Where it's like, I care about this spider who is like figuring things out and going on a weird, cool adventure way more than I care about uh, the uh, other characters in this show who are just like in a normal isekai. Like, I don't care about them as much as I care about our spider friend. All right, so now we need G. That's not G. And that's that. That's a, a That's been a fun show. Um, it is going pretty slow, I would say, because it is a 24-episode series that they are taking their sweet-ass time with it, which, you know, I, I'm not the most thrilled with, but I'll watch it because I think it's a pretty fun show. Uh, I am enjoying it. Uh, let's see, what else have I been watching that I want to talk about? Let's go while we do this inking here. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen. So uh, we still haven't seen the thing that we came to see, which is... Um, Toto versus uh, 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 Yuji. We haven't seen that since. They, they're still fighting, I presume. Uh, we see a shot of them. But uh, things fucking kick off in this episode. Let's see. Uh, we get to see Megumi versus uh, Noritoshi, who we didn't know what Noritoshi did uh, at this point. We just knew that he was like a third year at the Kyoto school and that he looked tough as hell. Uh, turns out he is tough as hell. Uh, and he uses blood manipulation. Apparently, <clears throat> through his uh, abilities, he can uh, manipulate. If he has like a drop of blood on like one of his arrows, he can manipulate that. Uh, and he also has, he carries around blood packs that he can throw to uh, to manipulate uh, with cursed energy. So that he is doesn't have to like bleed, which is fucking smart of him doing his thing. He's got reasons to fight, and they're whatever, and I don't care about them. Uh, oh! Looks like some of our uh, subs have uh, have dropped there, so we are going to put this back up, because we are, and I gotta edit this, because we are at 48 subs right now, and that's fine. 
as always, as I said, it is fine. But I would love to hit 50, so I am putting that up. If we do hit 50, that would be great. If we don't hit 50, that's okay. But I am just putting it out there. That is that is the goal, is to hit 50 subscribers and stay at 50. So throwing that up there. Again, no worries if you can't subscribe or you don't want to subscribe. But if you want to, that'd be great. If you want to give this up, you definitely can do that too. Um, anyway, uh, oh, uh, the funniest part of this episode is the moment where uh, Kitsumi, who is kind of, she hasn't been knocked out of the competition. She's just felt um, completely out of place because uh, I did, ooh, I missed a piece. I got to pop this off and put a piece on here. I missed a piece here, folks. Sorry. Um, her sword got stolen, and so she's felt very out of whack. Uh, and then uh, she answers her phone thinking it's the uh, mech guy, but it is... Our man Toge, who uses uh, cursed words, cursed speech, and he just says sleep, and then she falls asleep, and good night, you are now out of the story arc, because they probably won't find you to wake you up, so you are out of the story arc, have fun, bye bye see you later, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, Harold is gifting a sub. Uh, uh, to I am Lee Chin. I am Lee Chin. Welcome, so uh, welcome, Harold. Thank you for that. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the gift of sub. That's rad. Thank you so much for that. We are now back up to forty nine. Um, uh, and that is rad of you. I appreciate that very much, uh, Harold. Thank you for gifting that sub. Uh, that rules. And welcome. Uh, I am Lee Chin. You are Lee Chen, and you are welcome here. And we're at 49, which is cool. And, uh, yeah, we can throw some emotes in there. Um, so here's the thing that happens in this episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, the evil spirits show up. Uh, the cursed spirits, I forgot they were going to. I forgot that part of the story was that they were going to show up. I totally forgot that was a thing because it's been a few episodes of just this fight's happening. So, anyway... Uh, Hanami. Uh, oh, and Aristophan, just uh, gift this up to uh, uh, Akito. Uh, thank you so much, Aristophan. I appreciate that so much. Thank you very much for doing that. That fucking rules. The applause there. And I can take that off now. Because we are back up to 50 subscribers. Thank you so much, Aristophan. That's so generous of you. Appreciate that so much. Welcome to people that have been gifted subs. Thank you so much. Uh, and as always, I'll just say it. If you want to convert that, they won't charge you until you hit that month. Uh, and let's hit that gong. But yes, welcome. Enjoy your emotes. Enjoy you not seeing ads when you click on the stream. And then we'll put a gong right there. That's rad. That's so awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for gifting those subs and getting me back up to 50. Which is, that's good. I'm happy to be there. Um, so yeah, the monsters show up. Uh, and that sucks. Um, and there's a new... Uh, evil jiu-jitsu user I, uh, we have not seen this character before I do not know his name I do know that he he's dressed like a butcher without a shirt on and he's obsessed with turn look I'm going to say this out loud because that is what this character is saying this is this character's wants this character uh, wants to in Jujutsu Kaisen turn people into coat racks he wants to turn people into coat racks because he is an evil character. And that is what he is here to do, is turn people into coat racks. Uh, Wizard, uh, we are... Look, yeah, this is a little bit of a Decepticon-looking thing because it does transform. This is the Kyrios, uh, and this kit does have a flight mode. Uh, the uh, um, uh, we will when, Eventually, when we get to it, the shield goes and, and, and help, attaches on. It does have a backpack that becomes a cockpit. Uh, but yes, uh, it does not turn into a gun. So because it is a Gundam, uh, often big Gundams have big guns. They have big weapons. This kit doesn't really have a big gun. It does have a flight mode, though. So it is, it is closer to a Seeker uh, Decepticon, uh, like Starscream, than it is another one. Uh, 
There's also swords. You're not wrong. There are there are beam sabers. That they, they're they basically have um they have lightsabers, but they call them beam sabers. Uh, that is pretty common. You're not wrong. But there are there are also also there are Gundams that have big steel swords like katanas, which is always interesting and strange. But yeah, uh, you know it it they run the gambit. They got a bunch of things going on. Uh, all right, we're gonna put some color on this. I'm gonna keep talking a little bit. Uh, um, uh, so, you know, if you've been watching Jesus Kaisen, you know there's this evil principal character, um, and he definitely sucks, because he wants our main character to be murdered, so he sucks. But also, I found out, um, that this dude, uh, oh, thank you for the follow, uh, OG King, welcome, welcome, happy to have you here, uh, appreciate it. Um, okay, so... The big reveal in Jesus Kaisen is that the old man, the old principal, who looks like an old man, he's just an old man, but he's got some kind of, you know, he's a principal at a school of people that fight curses, so you know he's going to be strong. Uh, his ability involves him playing motherfucking electric guitar. He's got a kick-ass looking electric guitar. Uh, and I was not prepared for that revelation that this, like, mean old man... Uh, who, you know, teaches people to destroy evil spirits, was going to fucking rock an electric guitar. Uh, that was very surprising. <laughs> it was pretty fucking cool. Uh, also, there's a barrier to keep Gojo out, so they can probably kill a bunch of people, uh, which is uh, bad news, because he is clearly the, mo the strongest sorcerer there. Uh... But yeah, uh, that, that episode was really solid and very cool. And as I said, unexpected. There were some elements that I was not expecting with that episode. Um, okay, and then we will get our last part of our leg together. And then we can body, uh, we can do a complete body assembly of this kit. Uh, we'll do the backpack here now while we can. This is going to go here. This is important uh, because it is part of the flight mode when we transform it. And we'll do that there. Um, okay, what else do I want to tell you about? Uh, look, if you're if you're not watching with a dog and a cat, every day is fun. You're missing one of the cutest anime out this season. It's on Crunchyroll. With a dog and a cat, every day is fun. It is a great show. I highly recommend you check it out uh, because it is just a delightful, great energy, good time show. Um Basically, in this episode, because like, it's like two minutes each episode. In this episode, we learned that uh, if you trick... Sorry, for some reason, my phone decided I was talking to it, which I was not. Um, we learned that if you trick the dog, he will just, like, show you that he's a good boy and it's fine. But if you try to trick the cat, the cat will just attack you. And the cat has wants nothing of playing your games. None of your silly games. All right, so we are body complete. This is a tall friend. This is a very tall model kit. I'm going to put it up. This is a very tall kit that does transform. Uh, we will finish the... Uh, we're going to skip the weapons for a minute to work on the shield so that we can transform this thing because uh, the shield is pretty involved. So we will work on the shield here. Actually, let's do the transformation and we'll do the shield uh, after that because I want to make sure I get to the transformation. Um... So we'll do that. We'll get into this transformation once we'll that. Um, uh, the dog forgets things he doesn't like. In this case, going to the dog groomers. He, like, totally forgot, and it's fine. Push and lock in place when referred in transformation. Okay, so we will put these down. Um, and, uh, oh, the cat likes things the way they are. The cat does not roll with things. Uh, you've got to do things exactly the way the cat wants them to. Um, okay, so... This goes down. This goes like this. Okay. Uh, all right. Now we are going to... This goes down. This goes up and over. And now you can see that the, the back of the headpiece now sticks up, which is neat. Um, yeah. Very fun episode of With the Dog and the Cat Every Day is Fun. Again, highly recommend you check that show out because I think it is just adorable. All right. So... Yeah, we don't want to deal with that. That's fine. All right, so this is going to turn. These go up. 
This is the, my first time doing this, so bear with me as I try to figure out how it wants me to uh, transform this, because I haven't transformed it. Um, Horamiya. If you're watching uh, Horamiya, um, the weirdest part of this uh, episode is that the, just her dad is so strange. Um, some big things happen this episode, uh, and by big things I mean he gets a haircut. Uh, because the word gets out that he's dating, uh, that, that Izumi and, uh, Kyoko are dating. And I think he's kind of, like, reacting to the fact, it's like, oh, I'll have a short haircut and people will realize that I'm pretty cool because they'll be able to see that I'm actually pretty handsome. And, uh, she is very unhappy, uh, uh, with the attention because, you know, now this gloomy emo guy is suddenly attractive, so girls are paying him attention. And she is not happy with that. Uh, okay, so let me see if I can figure out how this works. Uh, this goes up. These little pegs go up. Um, also, some girl shows up and is unhappy that Kyoko and Izumi are dating. And her name is Honoka. And she is a new character that we have not seen. She's their underclassman. And at first you're like, oh... Well, maybe she's one of those girls that's like, oh, she liked the guy that was like, sa like it, oh, it, you know, it was safe because, uh, you know, he just seemed like a gloomy guy that didn't talk to anyone so she could have a crush on him and it was fine. No, she's not upset. That's not why she's upset that, they're, that the two of them are dating. She's upset because she has a big crush on uh, uh, Kyoko. And this is our first character who is uh, has presented themselves as queer in the show. We have not seen that uh, before, uh, and that that is cool as hell. So that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, she now has like a kind of like a brotherly uh, issues, like rivalry, um, and it does not stated in the show. This is my opinion based on what I've seen. I get the sense that Azumi was like ready for it to be a problem with like maybe some uh, other guys would you know say like, hey, you shouldn't date him, you should date me, or, you know, he was going to get into a fight or something. He wasn't expecting some other girl to profess her love uh, for uh, for Kyoko. And he's basically like, if you were a guy, I would headbutt you by now. <laughs> but he can't do that because it's just a girl that has professed her feelings. Um, so he can't do anything about it, which I thought was pretty funny. Um so, let's see. Uh, what else happens there? Oh, also, she lives next door to <laughs> Izumi, which that the most ridiculous thing that's happened in the show, I would say, is the fact that they're neighbors and he didn't know who she was. Uh, that seems ridiculous. Uh, okay. Rota now we have to rotate the legs. So, we're going to rotate the legs here. Uh, um... Okay, I'm going to pop these out here. I'll just do that. Rotate these legs. That didn't feel great. Everything else has felt okay about this transformation. That did not feel great. All right, we rotated the legs here. And... Okay, look at that. Um, oh, also, yeah, they're kind of getting a... Uh, they're kind of getting a, a, a like a, a friendship, and then also we find out that uh, uh, Honoka has a fear of. Sometimes she's a fear of other dudes, but she seems to be okay with him. So I don't know. I don't know where this is going as as with the other stuff, but uh, we got a new character, and I am totally cool with having a new uh, queer character in the show. I think that is that's pretty rad. All right, so this is good here, this is good here, and then this is going to go up and back. Yes. You see the shoulder, the, or the knees things are also part of the flight mode. And then this is going to go like this, like this, Oops, the other way, right? Or, yeah, no, that's right. Okay. All right, and that's basically the flight mode, with the exception of, um, if I had the weapons done, the uh, the shield goes over here, and then one of the weapons goes underneath it, 
But yeah, that is the flight mode. Uh, I will say, I have built quite a few flight modes in my day, and this wasn't necessarily the easiest to build, but it does by far look the most like a flight mode because of the backpack that is uh, the cockpit instead of it being a shield. This looks like a flight mode, whereas other kits definitely do not look like a flight mode. Uh, now, when you turn it over, uh, I think I like the reverse wing more. Yeah, I can see that. But um, when you turn it over, it definitely just looks like a kit that, you know, like a, a mobile suit flying. Um, have you seen worse transfers? Yeah, like the Epion is a great in design. Building an Epion ma Master Grade, the model kit, it never looks good. The, the Epion never looks like a good kit, and it always is frustrating to me because it could look rad, and it just never fucking does. Uh, oh, we can also do this to kind of give it more stability, I guess. Yeah, you could do that to give it stability. So we'll do that kind of like landing things that maybe we'll keep it from tipping over. But no, I think this thing is just going to tip over because I don't have a stand for it right now. Um, but yeah, I still think it looks pretty good. Uh, you'll never see a mobile suit uh, from the bottom. Like if you see like the wing fly, you'll never see like the head move around. You always see it from the top. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, we've got some time, so let's uh, let's build the shield because the shield will look cool on it. So we can start getting the shield together, and the weapons can kind of fit underneath it too. Uh, but yeah, if I had the thing, that would be cool. Uh, but we'll, we'll build the shield. Um, and uh, yeah, so Horror Mia, it's a good episode. Uh, I recommend it if you if you've been watching the show, get caught up because it is pretty dang rad. And it's a, overall just a good romantic comedy. The dub is coming out. They just put, like, I think the first two episodes of the dub. Uh, shout out to Wai Chang, uh, a friend of the stream, uh, who is uh, doing a voice of, I think his name is Shu. Yeah, he's the or, uh, purp, or sorry green-haired guy. He's not a main character, but he shows up and is pretty fun. So, yeah, shout outs to, uh, to our friend for getting that uh, voice role. It's pretty fun. But yeah, uh, a lot of, the, not all of them, but a lot of the shows that are coming out this season, the dubs are starting to appear. So if you are a person that prefers to watch dubs over subs, you are getting some things to watch. So congrats for y'all. But yeah, I think this trans transformation looks pretty dang neat. We'll try to get the shield done and then I'll take, you know, photos of it. Let me get, yeah, we'll, We've got some time left on stream, so maybe we can get the shield done, and then I'll try to line this up well enough. Maybe I'll do something like that so I can take a photo and then just pretend my finger isn't holding it. But yeah, this thing needs needs a stand so it doesn't tip over. Or I can put, like, the eraser back here to kind of keep it like that. Yeah, there you go. I'll just do that. Boom. Now it stands up, no problem. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty neat transformation. Uh, it also didn't... I, that's something I'm going to be able to do. Like, I'm going to be able to revert it back to its other form uh, to take a photo of it like that. Uh, see, we need E. Uh, what is this? this? Is E here? Okay, we need E. Um, like I said, I'm going to check out Vlad Love for Monday. That is a series I'm definitely going to want to check out a little bit of. See if that's something that I want to watch. Um, I'm not convinced yet, but I will give it a go because it seems like it might be a cool show. Uh, I'm looking for more comedies. I like romantic comedies. I like queer comedies. Uh, I like shows that have things like vampires and the like, but aren't horror, you know? So it seems like there's a lot for me to like in that show. So I will be checking it out and we will see. Uh, if that ends up being something pretty cool. So yeah, this shield also has a weapon, which I, I always enjoy in uh, in Gundam and other shows like this, that the shield has pincers, basically. Uh, and then the shield also just like lives on the side of this kit in this transformation, which is pretty neat. So we'll do that too. But we'll just get the pieces we need and go for that. Um, YouTube stuff, I'm watching, you know, like I said... Uh, I'm, I'm watching old stuff again, kind of going through the archives uh, every once in a while. Like, so I've been doing a thing where I have a, a, uh, a Chrome uh, 
box uh, attached to a TV in my bedroom, and I can control that with my phone. And so what I've been doing is, since I have the computer out here, I kind of just hit a point where I'm like, I'm just going to put something on on YouTube, watch it for a little bit, and then go to bed. Uh, and then, you know, I'll be my phone checking whatever, Twitter or whatever, while, while I kind of just, like, chill out. Um, I have been watching a bunch of uh, Game Grumps compilations of, like, just, like, them getting mad or them just being silly or whatever. And I'm not I'm not the hugest Game Grumps fan, um, but I do like Dan and Aaron's uh, chemistry. I think those guys play really well together, and I like that kind of banter the two of them have. Also, Dan is a sweetheart who I have not talked to in many years, but knew as the new years ago in the New York comedy scene, and he's just a doll. Uh, and uh, I am happy for his success, that he is doing well and doing cool shit. So it is kind of fun to listen to him, goof around, hang out. So yeah, I've been watching some Game Grump stuff to just kind of like, I don't know, relax uh, at the end of a long day before bed. That has been kind of, yeah, kind of my chill out stuff. Uh, I don't have any, like, this is my new favorite YouTube channel thing to talk about. I try to, like, have stuff like that, but right now I don't have anything. Okay, so now we're going to hit this uh, orange we are using the brown marker for. So we will dig up our brown marker and just hit this uh, a couple places where there are some engines there. Just our brown marker. We, did, we tested this uh, before this before we started doing this here to kind of see where these look the best, like what color looked the best here. Uh, and we came to the conclusion, or at least I did myself, and I'm the one that's doing it, that I liked the brown marker on orange the best. Black looked okay. The gray didn't really do anything. Um, and... I don't use my brown marker that often, so I might as well use it when I can. Uh, some people use brown on like red, and I think that looks pretty good, but I also think black looks good on red. And some people use brown on gold and yellow, and I hate that. I think that looks terrible. So, well, we'll figure it out. So, I mean, some people use black marker on white, and I think the brown looks better, or the gray looks better that way. Just figuring it out, folks. But yeah, if you've got anything on YouTube that you're watching that you're like, oh, Pat, you got to check this out. Like, feel free to always, you know, let me know in the comments here. Or you also have the ability to just like, you know, send me a tweet whenever or mention it in the uh, um, in uh, the Discord or whatever. But yeah, if you're watching something, if it's related to stuff, if you're just like, this is my new favorite person that talks about anime, uh you know, like those anime essays or uh, this is like, these are the funny people that do Let's Plays. You should check these people out. Like, I just discovered this. I'm sure other people have been known about this for years, but I just found this channel. Like, yeah, let me know that stuff. I, I like seeing th those things and I would be happy to have you share the love of something that you're into because those things are nice. Um, and that's fun. Like that, that is fun for me. When people are like, here is the thing that I am super into right now. Like, I am excited to see those things. So feel free to share those. Like I said, you can always tweet at me. If you're like, oh, I'm watching this. It's rules. Or you can jump into the old uh, uh, um, Discord or whatever. If you've got something that you're super duper into. Here's the thing that's happening that I don't like. Um... I have never liked uh, abridged fan dubs. You know, you know what I'm talking about, where they're like, it's a it's a clip of Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's uh, it's us, it's our collective group doing fake voices. I've just never enjoyed that. I'm sure there are good ones out there, uh, but I've just it's never been a thing that I look for. Uh, and I was looking for a particular clip from Dragon Ball Super, and I couldn't find it, so I was searching for it. And then eventually I did find the clip I was looking for, and I was very happy to find it. But because I was looking for that, I just got a whole lot of clips of, like, abridged 
episode whatever, the best of four star whatever, team four star. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to watch those. I, I don't, that's just, I've never, ever been like psyched about those things. They've never been a thing that I'm like, this is exactly the kind of comedy I'm looking for. I don't know. Uh, I did find the, uh, the Dragon Ball quote I was looking for, which was, uh, which was Vegeta and uh, Goku talking about the strong women in their life. And he was like, well, it's in our DNA. Uh, Saiyans like, you know, tough, le- tough, strong ladies. Uh, and then there's this look of from Piccolo, who has been standing there being stoic of being like, oh, everything makes sense now. Now I know that's why that they're both with these ladies. Okay. And it's just a very funny quiet moment in uh in Dragon Ball Super. That's one of my favorites cuz Vegeta is secretly the best character in Dragon Ball Super. He's got some good comedy, got some good pathos. His uh relationship with uh the the Saiyan from the 5th dimension whose name I can't remember and I feel bad I can't remember his name, but he's there. Uh that is gold, like his like sensei relationship with his mess relationship with, with him, like getting him to power up. He's, it, it's not cabbage. It's not kelp. It's one of those. I forget what his name is, but, uh, I thought that I, you know, I think that's really fun. His like fear of Barris is very cute. Him like not wanting to go train because Bulma's going to have their second kid. And he's like, I gotta be there for it. What are you talking about? Kakarot. Like, no, you don't, I don't skip out on the pregnancy. You got to be there to help. It's like, what are you talking about? She'd be so mad. I don't know. Uh, Vegeta is like great in that show. It's got its high points. It's got its low points. It's got, definitely got its low points. I still can't believe uh, that the dub didn't fix uh, the terrible line. Uh, that I'm not going to repeat on here, but there's a very bad line in the subtitles, and then they dub didn't change it, and I can't believe they didn't. Uh, in context, it's fine, but but out of context, uh, it's awful. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I know what you're going for with this line, but like you have to know what context means. Get to use some context clues, y'all. You can't say it like that. Anyway, Mondo Cool. Yes, Lord Crashington. Uh, Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super is Mondo Cool. You're not wrong. Not bad. I would love to watch that show uh, again. Uh, and like, I'm not going to buy the Blu-rays of Dragon Ball Super, but I would definitely borrow the Blu-rays of Dragon Ball Super because that... Uh, the quality of doing that show weekly for so long, uh, the quality uh, really suffered in some of the fight scenes. Some of the fight scenes in that show look like complete trash and are not good. And so I would love uh, a chance to watch that again, but not bad. Uh, and I feel like there's going to be a... Uh, I bet the Blu-ray, they cleaned up some of the... Uh, issues, but the problem of watching a thing that's subtitled, or sorry, that's um, uh, that's you know simulcast streamed or simul streamed, is they never go in and fix those. Those always look that way. Uh, they they almost never do. Uh, a friend of mine sent let me borrow a Blu-ray of the uh, uh, Naruto Shippuden, some of the last fights in that, and the Blu-rays look incredible. Watch it like DBZ aired. Repeat some sagas and randomly start over. Yeah, I mean, you can totally do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, where it was just like, they ran out of, they well, they would run out of dub, but they would still want to air it, so they would just jump to a point. They wouldn't, like, start over in the beginning. They would just be like, all right, now we're going to see the Heaven Saga again. Or not, That's a bad example, but whatever. Uh, all right, so... We have more of the shield to build, but we are going to build that on uh, Monday. We're going to wait on Monday. Um, 
I'm going to take a photo of this now in this form and then transform it. I'll show you that. But we're going to finish up with that, and then I will continue the build on Monday of this kit, and we will finish the shield, and we will build the weapons, and then we will uh, be done with this very lovely kit. But I'm going to take a photo now and then transform it. We are going to um, raid, so don't worry about that. Ooh, I did get a lovely bit of spam. I got a spam message. Cool. Delete that. Spam text. Always fun to see. Uh, we're going to take a photo of it like this in flight mode. Like that. Oh, looks pretty cool. Flight mode. And then we'll transform it. Um, and then, yeah, on uh, on Monday, we will complete this. We are going to raid uh, some people tonight, so feel free to hang out for that. We always end a stream with a raid uh, so that we can go and see what people are up to and uh, share the love. Uh, and it's always somebody, hopefully, generally on the West Coast, who will be streaming for another couple hours. That is always the goal. So hopefully we will find somebody who is going to be streaming for a little bit, and we can go give them uh, some love. So we'll do that in a minute or two. Uh, go like that. And we'll do that. Then these go up and lock in. Go up and lock in. And then this comes out. And this goes like that. And then these little things pop back in. And this pops up. And there we go. Just about done. And then these can pop up like this. And there we go. Transformed. And I will take a photo of that. And yeah, we will call that a stream in a minute. Let me just take this photo. And there we go. All right. So let's find somebody cool for us to go raid. Feel free to come along this raid. As always, if you, if you don't want to, you, you don't have to. But it is awesome to have people come along on a raid as we go and see who's out there in the world and continue the fun times. Again, my next stream is on Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We will continue with this kit. Then we will build the nano blo uh, blocks thing. Uh, we will do our first ever nano blocks, which is uh, the uh, Ava 02 right here. Our first Ava uh, thing ever. First time doing nano, nano blocks. I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how long it's going to take. Never built one, but we'll do that there. Um, let's see. Uh, who is doing stuff that we want to go and see what they're up to? Well, uh, let's go see. How long is this person going for? I don't know how long they're going for. Uh, well, uh, oh, I haven't seen this, so... Joe Kim is playing Hyrule Warriors, so we're going to go raid Joe Kim. Uh, Joe Kim rules. Uh, and Joe Kim is working towards a sub goal, so we'll go uh, see Joe Kim. Thanks so much for hanging out. Feel free to come along on this raid uh, and uh, support uh, my friend Joe. Uh, and, uh, yeah, feel free to come hang out. Uh, I think that'll be very fun. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday night, and I'll see you in the next Build Bear on Monday, where we'll finish up this kit. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.